coming to us. Amen. The word is going to be coming to us tonight from uh, Reverend Sanford Dickerson Jr. Uh, Brother Dickerson is, is uh, God's gifting him with a, with a, with a word uh, to to everywhere he goes. The, the, the Lord has told him, uh, "You speak about faith. You teach people how to believe. You teach people about trusting in my word. You teach people about positive confession." And everywhere he goes, he's got a word in, along those lines. When I met him, he told me this, and I didn't realize what exactly the Lord was doing until I see the benefits. Uh, of it here uh, and we've seen it on our prayer line we've seen it throughout the other times that he's ministered in, in the in the church uh and i thank god for his ministry uh so we're gonna pray and then we're gonna hand it off to uh reverend dickerson uh, and god's gonna speak to us and continue to grow our faith and our knowledge of the word of god uh, through his ministry tonight so let's pray together father thank you for this opportunity to be together on the prayer line again thank you lord for uh for re for renewing our strength, Lord, for giving us more and more health each day. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in so many people's lives in our congregation. Praying, Lord, that tonight will be a blessing as we've opened up ourselves uh, to be submissive to your will, Lord, to hear the word tonight. Bless us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Dickerson, if you can unmute your, uh, your, your, your system there and we can hear the word from you tonight. Mm, not yet, not yet, not yet. It's coming. Let's see what it says. That helps. There we go. I'm good now. That's it. I can hear you now. Yes. All right. Can you and can you still see me? Uh just lost you for a sec right there. Lost uh, me now. Uh okay. I still don't see you, but you can go ahead and start ministering if you want to. Well, I was trying to I was trying to see if I can just use my notes without uh uh, that's okay. I'm coming back on. Hold on. No problem. I'm coming back on. I'm coming back on. Here I am. All right. <laughs> anyway, grace and peace, Zion. It's, it's a honor and privilege once again to be back on the phone, uh, on the prayer line. Uh, Pastor, good evening. I, I, I'm praising God that you're feeling better. Uh, also to all the Zionites, all the family members all who are in the sound of my voice, I want to thank all you for your attention and uh, for all your Hmm. All your comments from from yesterday, from last week, it really it really encouraged me and really blessed me that I am on the right track. Not that I had any doubt that I was, but it's still encouraging to hear those who are affected by the message. And so, what on with that in mind, um, we talked about last week. All things are possible to him, to her, to those, and to them that believe. And so with all that information that I gave you last week, and I'm not going to rehearse it, I just wanted to encourage you to continue to stand in faith, believe in God for whatever you need God to do in your life. And of course, I put the emphasis last week on, on healing. And so uh, this week, did I lose you again? <laughs> or, or, or on healing. And, and so... Uh, Whatever it is you need God for, you're not to give up, you're not to quit, you're not to cave in. And so what I want to do this week is talk about that very thing about not giving up, not caving in, and not quitting on God. And so, bear with me. I have it here. All right. And so if you have your Bibles, please, please turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 starting with the just just the one verse as well as find James chapter 1 uh, 5 to 8 and so on the on the tail of or the backbone of what we talked about last week keeping you encouraged to continue to walk by faith not by sight and also to know that all things are possible to him to, him, to her to those in that believe uh, I want you to know that no matter what you're, to remind you again, to encourage you again, that no matter what you are dealing with, it doesn't have to just be sickness and disease. Whatever trials you're facing in your life, whatever you have prayed to God about, whatever you're standing in faith about, you're not to, and I'm just going to give you my title before I even give you the verse of scripture. Don't waver. Don't cave in. Don't give up. Don't quit or faint. Don't waver. Don't cave in. Don't give up. 
don't quit or faint, which all means pretty much the same thing, but I wanted to stress to make sure I get my point across. Galatians 6, 9 says this in King James Version. And let not be, let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, while it says do not get weary in well doing, you can add any one of those words in my title in that verse of scripture, and we can say it like this. Let us not waver in well-doing. Let us not cave in in well-doing. Let us not give up in well-doing. Let us not quit in well-doing. Let us not faint while in well-doing. For in due season, my brothers, sisters, family, and friends, you will reap if you do not faint, if you do not waver, if you do not cave in, if you do not give up, if you do not quit. Most of all, if you do not quit and give up on God. Because when we are quitting and when we give up and when we cave in, it's because we are what? We're actually literally giving up on God. He is the only one who can answer our prayers. He's the only one who can turn our situation around. Therefore, we can't afford to waver, cave in, give up, quit, or faint. And so let's go now to James chapter one, starting with the fifth verse. And it reads, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man or woman think that he or she shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man, a double-minded woman, boy or girl, is unstable in all his ways. My brother and sister, friends, in that verse of scripture, it says a whole bunch about not wavering. Not about not being double-minded, for when we waver and are double-minded, when we're doubting, verse 7 says, we're to not expect to receive anything from the Lord. My brothers and sisters, friends, you are going to have some doubts every now and then. The only thing is, I just want to remind you before I get into my message here, is that doubt is going to come to pass. It's, it's going to come into your mind, because that's what the devil does. He sends doubt to us even when we're standing in faith believing for god even for the impossible for to become possible as we said yesterday the last week but as but as mark eleven twenty three 23 says that if you say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart there's a there's the key right there not doubting in your heart it's okay you're going to have doubts in your mind as long as there's you don't like the doubt that's in your mind get down into your heart. As long as you don't let the doubt go from your mind into your heart, you're going to be okay. You, you can continue to stand in faith. Why? Because we believe what's in our heart. Once it gets in our heart, it's what we believe. And so as long as you don't allow the doubt to get down into your heart, where you change from believing God to doubting God, and the doubt comes by what you get in when it comes down into your heart. When it gets into your heart, guess what? The devil knows he's got you because you're doubting God. And that's when you want to start. And when you start doubting God, and when that doubt goes from your head down into your heart, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start speaking out of your mouth what you believe, which is the doubt and unbelief that the devil has put in your mind and that you allowed, that you played with, that you kept thinking about, and now it's trickled down into your heart. And now it's gotten to your heart. You're going to start speaking that doubt because you've been thinking with that doubt, you've been playing with that doubt, you didn't cast it down, because that's what the devil's going to do as soon as you stand in faith. I'm telling you, I'm a witness. As soon as you stand in faith for anything, the devil is going to bring doubt into your mind. However, that's okay. As long as you don't start playing with that doubt and allowing that doubt to get into your heart to where you start believing it. Because when you start believing the doubt, now you're in trouble. Why? Because you're going to start speaking the doubt. I, I, I can prove it. Matthew 
I believe it's 1234, says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's ever in your heart is what you're going to be saying out of your mouth. That includes that doubt, if you don't cast it down, that the devil has put in your head that you allow to get down into your heart. And now when you start believing it, you're going to start speaking it. And because you start speaking it, now you you fall in danger of James um, 5 and 8, where it talks about, you know, you being double-minded and wavering and that you should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because now you're doubting. So, so it's, it, I mean, because your doubt has gotten to your heart. It's one thing that be in your mind. Let it stay there because that's what the devil's going to do. Just don't let it get down into your heart because once it gets down into your heart, now you're going to start speaking that stuff that I said last week against what you're believing God for because you will now have allowed the doubt get into your heart. And now you're going to become what? Wavering, second guessing God. And then you're going to be, and then you're going to be tossed to and fro. You'll, one day you're up, one day you're down, one day you're believing, one day you're not believing. And the Lord says, and, and James says, you should not expect, in verse 7, to receive anything that includes healing from sickness and disease, anything from the Lord. Why? Because you're unstable in all your ways. Moving on. Moving on. So, my brothers and family friends, don't waver, don't cave in, don't give up, don't quit, and don't faint. What do you do when you have done all you know to do about your problem, your situation that you are dealing with? And no matter all of your efforts, the problem or the situation is not getting any better. What do you do when, uh, when life in general just seems unfair? That no matter how many steps you take going forward and making progress, life just seems to keep knocking you backwards. Well, my brothers and family friends, the answer is in the very verses of scripture that I just gave. Mm -hmm. You're not to what? Get weary. You're not to waver. You're not to cave in. You're not to quit. And most of all, my brothers and family friends, you cannot give up. The minute you give up, not only are you giving up on yourself, you are giving up on God. And that is when you're mostly in trouble. Uh, because listen, you can't give up, you can't quit, you can't cave in. Why? Because you will reap, as our as Galatians 6, 9 tells us, you will reap, you will get your reward. You will succeed if you faint not, which also includes your healing from sickness and disease. You're never going to see you being healed if you allow doubt and unbelief to constantly come into your heart where you constantly want, because you're, it's taking too long to come and pass. That's what it is. It's taking too long to come and pass. Therefore, all of a sudden now, you, 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 you want to quit because Oh, well, and, and then the devil puts in your mind, well, you know, it ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, you can wait all you want. And then that doubt gets in and then you, there it goes. And then you start playing with it and then it gets from your, your head down to your heart when you start believing it and then you will start believing it. And when you start believing it, you're going to start saying out of your mouth without even realizing that you're saying it out of your mouth. Oh my God, I guess, I guess, I, I guess I'm just not going to get healed. I, I, I guess it's not meant for me, me to be healed. See, that's what the devil wants you to think. That's a lie from the pit of the from the pit of hell. That God wants you healed. Anyway, moving on. For nothing in this life, my brothers and sisters, that you want, or whatever you are trying to accomplish in this life, bad enough, ever comes easy. Living this life does not reside on Easy Street. To have a witness. No, but it does reside on chaos and confusion and difficult avenue. And therefore you can, therefore you can and should expect some, some terrain, some rough terrain from time to time as you ride this road called life. I encourage you to just hold on. That's what this whole message is about today, for you to hold on to what you're believing God for. Whatever that is from A to Z, whatever it is you need God to do for you, or whatever you need God to change around in your life or bring the past in your life in your favor, including you recovering from sickness and disease, I want to encourage you, and I can't say it enough, I can't stress it enough, this whole message is about this one word, 
do not give up. Again, no matter how long it's taking. For in your due season is right around the corner and is on its way. When you get weary and you feel like you want to faint, throw up your hands and quit, I say to you, don't. For the very fact that you are at your wit's end, for the very fact that you're about to quit, that you're ready to give up, cave in, or at your breaking point is the sign, it's a sign that your breakthrough is at the very door and it is on its way. Listen, my brothers and family friends, again, like I said last week, I'm not making light of anything that anybody is going through. Because trust me, we're all going to go through something in this life's journey that we're all on. I understand. I understand the weariness. I understand the frustration. I understand the, the tendency to want to give up, quit, and cave in. I understand. Trust me. Yes, I know what you are going through is not easy. Nothing that we go through when we're attacked with things and attacked with this and, and, and all the problems that we face in life, the circumstances, negative situations we're going through is easy. I get it. And I know you want to throw up your hands and quit. However, I want to encourage all those who are in the sound of my voice, all those who are watching this video, all those from the family of science, maybe you got visitors on here, I don't know. I want to encourage you, don't do it. I know it's hard, but don't give up. Don't quit. Don't waver. Don't cave in. Don't throw up your hands and don't faint. Don't let the delay of your healing, and I, and I you know, excuse me, but I like to use the subject of healing a lot in regard to faith because that is the number one challenge to all our faith. We don't, we don't seem to have a problem believing God for everything else, but when it comes to healing, uh, we just don't, you know, we lose our mind. We don't know what to do. We, we're, we're, you know, however, when we get into the word of God and learn it and study it, like we study salvation, let me say this real quick. You're saved only for one reason, because you believe what the Bible says about salvation. You never seen God. You never seen the Holy Spirit. You never seen Jesus. You never seen heaven. You never seen heaven or, or hell. Yet you believe because of what the Bible says about salvation you got convicted, you got a revelation that you need to be saved, and then what? You stepped out and got saved, and now you're a born-again child of God on your way to heaven. However, in between now and heaven, you're going to face some trials and tribulations, and the same Bible that says that you're saved by confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and believe that God raised him from the dead, Romans 10, 9 and 10, the same Bible tells you in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24, that by his stripes you are healed. Same way. It's up to you to believe. And so, so we, so just the very fact that you believed for salvation. And the reason why you got saved, because you kept hearing messages over and over and over and over again. Every single Sunday, almost every Bible study, every time you got in the church, it was all about what? Salvation. Well, you have no choice but to start getting convicted. And the revelation comes that you need to be saved and the Lord touched you and you got saved. Well, guess what? The more we hear about the faith message, the more we hear about getting healed from sickness and disease, it will build our faith up to trust God that he will see us through. Not just, again, not just for sickness and disease, but for whatever you are believing God for. So again, listen, I understand your weariness. Yes, I know you want to, what you're going through is not easy. I know what you, you want to throw up your hands and quit. However, I want to encourage you again. Don't do it. I know it's hard, but don't give up. Don't let, let the delay of your healing or whatever else you're believing God for come in the past deter you from continuing to stand in faith, trusting and believing God to bring your healing or whatever it is you are believing for. Healed marriage, finances, kids be okay, successful your job security, whatever it is you're believing God for, whatever you need God to do for you. Keep on believing that God will bring it to pass no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, and no matter what anybody's telling you, especially those naysayers. This is the very time, my brothers and sisters, when you're in the waiting period, you know, when it, it, it seems like it's taking forever to come to pass, in, in which during time, and during the waiting period, that you that the devil comes at you with all kinds of doubt and unbelief, harassment thoughts, 
Mm -hmm. Which is for the sole purpose to get you to quit believing God for whatever you're believing God for. Please, please, please. I'm encouraging. I'm in exhorting. I'm, oh, I, I can't say please enough. Don't ever give up. Don't ever cave in and don't ever quit. Don't do it. If you do, you're not going to see whatever you're believing God for come to pass or change in your life. I promise you, if you do, you may never see your healing come to pass. You may never see your marriage getting fixed. You may, you may lose your job. You may have all kinds of financial problems. Why? Because you're giving up on God because it, to you, it's taking too long to get here. You got to keep on believing. You got to keep on walking. You got to keep on standing. And then your breakthrough, your breakthrough will only come to pass with the end result of you being healed and, and well, as well as, uh, as you keep on no matter what, no, and no matter how long it's taking, you keep believing, keep on trusting God, and keep on confessing your healing or, again, whatever else you believe, believe in God for, no matter what or and no matter how long it is taking, especially when you start to get discouraged. That's what the devil is going to try to use against you. Let the devil know he will not win. For your God is bigger than any doubt he may, uh, that, that he may and is trying to bring upon you. All right? Now, listen. Get up real quick. I want you to get up. This is going this, I know this is being recorded, and I'm even going to put what I'm about to say here on Design Facebook page. But get a pencil and a piece of paper and write this down. This is, this is uh, exercise for you. You got some homework to do. This is going to help you. This is going to uplift you. This is going to strengthen you. This is going to encourage you. I want you to make this your daily confession. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it wherever you can see it. And confess this every time you get down and depressed. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, it will lift you up every single time you read it, quote it, whatever. You are to say it out loud. You know, matter of fact, you need to scream it if you have to. Until your confidence and faith in God and faith for your healing or whatever else you believe in God for uh, is back where it should be, which is what? Strong. And here it is. I'll take my time with it. I'll say it nice and slow so you get it. My faith is not fragile. My faith is not weak. My faith for my healing and deliverance get stronger every time I speak. Every time I speak, my faith, my confidence, and my determination to be healed get stronger and stronger. I will not waver. I will not cave in. I will not give up. I and, and with, excuse me, and with the strength and help of the Lord, no matter what, I will not quit. By his stripes, I was and I am healed right now. In spite of what I see, in spite of what I hear, in spite of what I'm feeling, no matter what. I claim, I confess, I walk in my healing now. I believe it. I receive it. I confess it. I walk in it. And I act like it's so. Why? Because it's already so according to God's word. In the name of Jesus, by faith and in faith, it is already so. I shall not be defeated. I shall be victorious. And I, I claim it done in the name of Jesus, who is my savior, my Lord, my all in all, my healer. Amen. And amen. My brothers and family friends, don't waver. Don't quit. Don't cave in. Don't give up. And do not think. And I believe your healing or whatever else you're asking God for, as long as you keep standing, having done all to stand, it shall come to pass.
pass. For all things are possible to him, to her, to those of them that believe. Why? Because there's absolutely, positively nothing too hard for the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you once again for this time. I thank you once again for this word. I thank you, Father, for what you have put in me to bring forth. I pray all those who are in the sound of my voice once again have been blessed, have been encouraged, have been strengthened, have been uplifted, that they will take this word, not just take my word, but get into the word for themselves, find out what, what I'm saying, uh, compare notes, whatever we need to do, to get the word of God for them in themselves, and they can believe the word of God for themselves, and they can stand on their own, trusting you for whatever it is they need you to do in their lives. And I'm asking you to touch each and every person right now who are in the sound of my voice, watch this video, who may be suffering from sickness or disease, who may be even suffering right now from this COVID virus, even this new virus. We take authority over it right now. We bind it. We curse it in the name of Jesus. And I declare and I decree them healed from the top of the head to the sole of the feet, according to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24, that by your stripes, we are and were healed. In the name of Jesus, we claim it done by faith. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. And Lord, also touch all those right now who may be going through bereavement. Strengthen them, encourage them, uplift them. Let them know that you'll live with them, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, that you'll have every present help in the time of need, trouble, and now in sorrow. That their joy, I don't know when, but their joy shall come in the morning. Lord, we ask you to continue to touch our pastor, continue to strengthen him. Thank you that he's back on his feet. Uh, that he's recovering. We thank you for his healing and anybody else who may be going through it this time again. Thank you for this time. I thank you for this word and all those who are listening. I pray that they've been blessed, encouraged, and uplifted and strengthened. That they'll continue to go on with you no matter what it is they're dealing with. That they never quit, give up, cave in, faint, and give up in any way, shape, or form. And you shall bring them through. We thank you. We praise you. And we give your name all the honor, glory, and praise for it. And by faith, Lord, we claim it done. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all.